I was born in Auten. I was in Auten uh, at age one and at age two, and then there was a divorce. And with that divorce, my mother remarried. And I was raised by a Nielsen father. He'd been my dad since I was very little. Um, but I had not known anything about these, these Ottens, this Dutch family. One day, I simply wanted to know who these Ottens were. We went into um, Sorensen Research, and with our genealogies in hand, you know, my side was a little bit longer than, than John Ottens. Both of us, you know, the whole, we're, we're looking at several hundred people who were watching this just to see what was going to happen. They did not know there was a connection. And it came back, and, and according to the research and everything that we had done, there were 15 to 18 generations that would separate him and I. I go back up to this and he would come down here, but you add those all up and there's 15 to 18 generations. And these DNA markers as they line out, there was not one difference. And this is all in a family I knew nothing about, absolutely nothing about. Two years ago, I thought so little of family history, and now it's become one of the biggest hobbies that I'm involved in. I found out that there were several boxes at the family farm in Michigan, and that the family farm had been sold. It actually had been inherited by my, by my direct father, and he sold it. But the boxes that contained everything in it, uh, that had the wills, the histories, the newspaper clippings, the formal photographs, um, the family sittings, all of these were in these boxes. In this box, I found this wallet. And this wallet just melted me. Because here's a woman, this is my grandmother's wallet, it's handmade. And I'm looking through this wallet, it is identical as to, she passed away in 69, I believe, 1969. And, and in this wallet, I found my picture and I, I barely remember ever seeing her. I'm not sure I've, I, that I'd remember her. She remembered me, and I found this wallet with my picture in it. I about melted. I melted because it's somebody I never knew, and somebody who had my picture. I begged for that wallet. I guess it told me that this Ruth Otten um, loved me, even though I didn't know who she was. I have tried to explain what's happened to my life because of relative genetics, because of this study that was done that connected these families, I have family all over the United States. And I've got lists of people that I have now called up. I called aunts who had not heard, knew nothing about me, hadn't seen me since I was a little, little boy. And I have said, I am, I am Tommy Otten. Where have you been? It's fascinating to know where I actually fit in who my blood father is. I love the man who raised me. I don't really know the man who didn't, but I, I've, I've been able to know his family and it's connected me to a huge family that I did not have before. I have been a Nielsen, but I don't look like them. I don't act like them. I don't think like them. I love them. They've adopted me. They took me in and my heart's with them. But I look like the Ottens. I talk like the Ottens. I am, I am an Otten. It's been exciting to be able to be associated with people who have had questions, who have had concerns for a lot of years about who they are and how they're connected, to be able to answer some of those questions for them and see the gratitude actually in their eyes to say, you know, I've been looking for this for years and years and years, and now I know. At the beginning of the Molecular Genealogy Project, we thought that we would have a pretty good handle on how well this was going to perform with 100,000 samples in our database. We're rapidly approaching that benchmark. We're not stopping there. We're going to a half a million, maybe a million people. We don't know where the, the end of the database goes. As that database grows, it's going to reach people throughout the entire world. To build that database is the crowning jewel, and we think we have a way of doing it. We want to implement that. And we got some great guys around us to make it happen. And not only around us, but these guys that want to make it happen that are around us recognize there's other spirits out there that want to do just as much as they do. 
To build the database, we need DNA samples from individuals who have known genealogies, people who know where they came from and how they're connected to other people. We use that information to build the database. Once that database is in place, then it becomes extremely useful. Useful to people who don't know anything about their genealogies. And so now what we do is those people will submit a DNA sample with a specific question. How am I related to this person? Or am I related to this person? Or where do I come from? Where were my genes 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 200 years ago? People want to do this work. And we want to help them do it. We've got a lot of things, reasons to want to help them do it. This project is huge. It's bigger than any one person. It's bigger than any one group. It's bigger than any one academic institution. But we are constantly looking for people who have the same goals, same ideas, same purposes to help us in this project, whether it be another university, whether it be companies, whether it be foundations, whether it be individuals. Anybody who is interested in, in participating in, in this project and being able to bring valuable information into this project, funding into this project, whatever it is that they can bring. If they're interested in the same goals, the same vision that we have, we're very interested in cooperating with them. The possibilities of what this project can do for, for science and understanding questions on inheritance still yet to be unraveled, but also the questions or the things that it can do for society. We really believe that there's something that, can, that science can contribute to bringing people together. Families take care of each other. And when you can connect families back together again, it can make a huge difference. Someone out there that, that may be struggling and, and needs some help from family. If we've been able to put them back together again, that's a major positive contribution to what's going on in the world. There's something different about this science. Science sometimes is, seems to be very impersonal. And you're in the laboratory, you're looking at test tubes, you have little tubes of, of things that you, you really don't identify with anybody or anything. This project's different. Here we're dealing with people, we're dealing with people's lives, we're dealing with people's families, we're dealing with the connections that people have together. To be able to do that and, and to, to think about that as these parts are coming together keeps me getting up every morning. I've invented many things, had many, many wonderful opportunities. This is the big one. This project would not be possible without the generosity of Mr. Jim Sorensen. But it's not just his generosity, but it's the vision that he has of, of his legacy. Something that he can do to leave for the world, some way that he can make a difference in the world, that he can bring the peoples of the world together, understanding how closely they are in fact related. I know I'm just a grain of sand in a big ocean of people out there. To get any of this thing accomplished, it has to be done with many, many more, many, many more people. But I have the feeling that it'll happen. It'll happen somehow, some way, and I want to be part of that. So uh, I don't want to worry about the glory. I don't want to think about the, I want to think about inspiring the work to go forward. I want to be there. We would like to invite people from all over the world to participate in the construction of this database. They can find out more information about how to do that at smgf.org.